Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more. Now, my guest today is an artist, author, and healer who's devoted his life to exploring and communicating the language of the heart, primal movement, and deep inner spaces. His training began at an early age in Mexico with curanderos and shamans, and over the years he studied with many world-renowned teachers. Today, his work is dedicated to helping improve both others' sense of well-being and the upliftment of consciousness using a wide variety of tools. He is Ernesto Ortiz. Ernesto, welcome, and thank you so much for being with us. Oh, Zaira, thank you so, so much for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be with you and your listeners. Now, uh, just to let to everybody know, you're not actually in America at the moment. You're in France, aren't you? Which is rather nice for us because we're on a similar time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Only one hour di different. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It makes life easy. Um, for everyone watching, the reason uh, I, I asked Ernesto if he would talk to us is he's written, he's written a most amazing book on the Akashic Records. And it's a, a subject that is dear to my heart. And I really would love to explore further with you. So for those who are unfamiliar with it, can we start by just asking the very simple question, what are the Akashic Records? Ooh, that, that may sound like a simple question, but that could be a, quite a complicated answer or a very, very lengthy answer. But uh, the Akashic Records, uh, they're one thing and the Akashic Fields are another. And I would like to separate both of them to have a broader understanding of this. Mm -hmm. Akashic fields are like, I call it the connected tissue of the universe. Mm -hmm. Like in our bodies, we have connective tissue that is holding all the bones and all of our organs in place. And if that connective tissue is removed, then all of the organs and all the, all the bones would fall. Mm -hmm. In the same way that, that Akashic field or Akasha is the connective tissue that surrounds every cell, every atom, every uh, planet, every, everything in the entire universe. So it's this gigantic membrane that moves from past to present and it will continue to the future at a very, very, very slow speed. Mm -hmm. um, quantum physicists have validated this field as the quantum, as the Akashic fields as a real field that has a function, and the function is to record information that is given into that field via emotions. Right. Or an output of energy that is recorded in the field. They say that anyone that is capable of modifying their consciousness, such, such, a, such as shamans, visionaries, seers, etc., from ancient past, have been able to tap or enter into that field to explore the potential that is there, which is unlimited. Now, from that immense field, which is the Akashic field, we can reduce it down to the Akashic records. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the Akashic records uh, can be reduced to cultural records, such as the output of energy that a particular culture is putting out and recording in this planet. Mm -hmm. and we reduce it one more time to family Akashic records and the family dynamics or the karma that yeah. is carried over from one life to the next to the next within a family group. And then we reduce it one more time to our individual Akashic records. And when you say our individual, it's us as a soul, not a personality. No, as an individual soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As, as our, our individual soul. So these are the recordings of our soul's evolution from the past to the present, and they will continue to the future. Mm. So the Akashic records are the the recordings of our soul's evolution. So everything that we have imprinted, imprinted into these fields in the past that has a, a karmic uh, imprint, positive or negative, mm. is the following us to this present moment. So the beauty of the Akashic Records at an individual level is that we can explore the imprints of energy that we have led into, left into this field in the past or the present life and correct anything that has not been 
properly transmuted or has not been forgiven, etc., to bring balance to our life. It is, to me, the most significant tool that I have lear learned in my entire life to help us balance karma. Right. So how, how would someone use this understanding then? Well, individuals that have the gift or that amazing ability to tap into these fields, modify their consciousness at will, mm -hmm. and enter into this field, they can explore it. Right. You know, individuals that are more uh, normal, like me and many others, uh, <laughs> and don't have that amazing gift, mm. what I use and teach is a sacred prayer that was handed down to us from the Mayan tradition to be able to modify our consciousness when we repeat this prayer in a certain way to be able to open the door of the Akashic fields so we can enter into our book of life mm -hmm. and explore the pages or the chapters that we have written in the past. Now, once we read the prayer and we can enter the fields, then we can travel these fields at will. Yeah. And then we can look at any action that we might have taken in the past maybe an action that was wrong in the past, maybe mm -hmm. we committed a, a crime, maybe we beat somebody up, or we did not forgive someone in the past or something like that. Mm -hmm. By entering this field, we can travel from the present to the past. Yeah. The action can never be changed. If yeah. you beat somebody up in the past, that is it, it's done. But the emotional imprint Mm -hmm. And we left by doing that action in our field and the field of the other person that can be modified. And the moment we modify that, we bring ourselves to forgiveness, the, realisa the realization of wrongdoings, etc. Then we can elim eliminate the karmic imprint, energetic imprint left by that action. So, so um, working with the Akashic Records in this way is, is a very potent tool for, you know, for clearing I, a lot of the karmic debt we build up. Yes, absolutely. I have been following a spiritual life since I remember, since I was six, seven years old. You know, I have had many, many amazing teachers, world-renowned and little people in their own little community. Yeah. I, learned so many spiritual tools over the past 50 years but to me if god the supreme being says to me you have to let go of all of your tools and you can only keep one what yeah. would that be yeah well, for me the akashic purpose would be that tool because i have already pro proven to myself yeah. that using the guidance from the akashic workers i can rebuild my entire life Right. <laughs> and when you say entire life, you're meaning your soul's life. Not I mean my entire physical, yeah. mental, emotional life due to, uh, uh, to catastrophe in my life, such as a hurricane yeah. and losing absolutely everything, uh, being burglarized before that and having taken all of my money. So to have... Uh, to, 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 to end up living in, a, in my car for two weeks wow. yeah. because the loss of everything, mm. experiencing the complete and total dark night of the soul with nowhere to go, but one single light that guided me all the way to the point that I am today, which is I'm living my life, the life of my dreams, mm. is through the guidance of the Akashic workers that have been able to do that. Right. No regrets, a tremendous amount of joy, even out of the loss of everything, because those, those have been some of the most delicious lessons that I have had in my life that makes me be the man that I am today. Right. So um, this engagement with the Akashic can help us to understand what it is. Everything. Oh. Yeah, everything yeah. they can. Uh, so it's like it's like it's taking what I call the helicopter view. It's kind of like you, you take the big, broad view of your life, and you can see something in context and understand 
Yes, that's a very good way to put it. The way that I describe it in my classes is to go to the witness seat. Yeah. And the witness seat is like the director's chair. So imagine life, your life, like yeah. a theatrical play. You are the director of that play, but you are also the main actor. And mm -hmm. everyone else in your life, family, friends, etc., are the other actors in that play. Well, you have the script. So by removing yourself from that play and sitting in the director's chair, with clarity, you are going to be able to see the dynamics mm -hmm. that you are playing out in this play, as well as the dynamics of the other actors. And then for that neutral point of view, you can have the discernment and the ability to change the script if you are not living the life or others are not participating in your life in a way that you would like it to be. Right. Many people talk about the Akashic Records as if it's a big library. Um, and, uh, you know, you hear descriptions of it as a temple and uh, all sorts of things like this. How, how do you see it and how do you engage with it? And, and is this what it is or is it just the way we have to put it to, to, to kind of get our, head, our heads around it? That is a linear way of understanding it. Mm -hmm. And we have to have in a way, a linear way of understanding it because otherwise it's so big, is imagine, imagine for a, a moment that you can enter the mind of God. Mm. How, can, how much of that mind can you explore? It's going to blow your mind. The molecule of it. Yeah. It's the same as with the Akashic Records. So the Akashic Records I call the Library of Congress of the Soul. And I think about the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., which is an immense building that mm -hmm. has millions and millions of manuscripts, books in 420 different languages, et cetera, et cetera. So imagine that you can enter this Akashic library and the librarians are the masters, the teachers that take care of that library. And from there, you can explore anything that you want. Do you want to know anything about your past life? The books are there. Do you yeah. want to know about present life? Your uh, addictions, codependencies, repeated patterns is there. Do you want to know about architecture, about UFOs, about uh, gardening, about uh, spirituality, mm -hmm. about how to be a better mother, a better father? You know, everything is right there. Yeah. So by going into this library of Akasha, we can ask the masters, the record keepers, to take us in our mind, in our essence, to, ex to be able to explore all mm. of the different aspects of ourselves and our relationship with life that we want to explore in order to be a better individual, a better human being, and be able to serve in a better way or live better footprints in this world than the footprints of anger and dissatisfaction and lack of forgiveness, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So this is, it, it's not just like, um, let me think, how, a great internet for the soul um, where, where you have access to, you know, enormous knowledge. It's, it, it's how you use it. Uh, it's like any tool, isn't it? It's how you use it. Yes, of course. It's absolutely that. It's how you use it. And, uh, and that, I, mean, I, I came from, I, you know, I've been around on the planet a fair few years now kicking about. And there was a past lives, there was a point where it was very trendy to, you know, say I, I have a past life and to go and find out you were Cleopatra or uh, it was always somebody famous. It se seemed to me that people were always coming and saying, oh, I was, you know, some historical figure or other. Um, but that everyone, everyone, that, everyone wants to be that <laughs> yeah. you know absolutely nobody was ever the servant <laughs> I was and I, I am today yes absolutely absolutely that that to me was a much much truer version of, of the truth when I heard it um, so it's so it's not just about curiosity about what you might have been in the past this is very much a, a spiritual tool to help you to help your soul evolve effectively and, and masters the masters will meet you on the other side uh, if that is what you desire um, and and will 
answer your questions. I mean, you, you give a lot of questions in your book, which I think is wonderful. You know, things that people, to, to start people off thinking about what they can begin to explore and how to do this. So it is, uh, you know, a very, a very rich tool. Yeah, many times people ask me, they want to know who were they in the past, et cetera. And, uh, and they want to know about past lives. And I always say, you know, to me, it makes really no difference who I was in the past. Yeah. I know that I have been a, a, a beggar, a king, a queen, a prostitute. I have been a saint. I have been everything. Yeah. And, you know, how many lives I have lived? Hundreds and hundreds of lives. Yeah. But what, what is important to me is not who I was before, but that this lifetime is the sum total of all of my lifetimes. And mm -hmm. for me, this is a lifetime of opportunity. Yeah. Because if we can die, if we can arrive at that precious moment in time, which is the moment of our death, mm -hmm. free and clear from all obscurations, from all the negativity, clear of anger, you know, forgiving everything and everyone. If we can arrive at that moment with an open heart that is filled with joy and with love, then what we transfer from one life to the next is our consciousness. Yeah. So if our consciousness is not clear, then that is the material that is going to appear in our next life. Yeah. And we're going to have to work on that. So if we take this life as the lifetime of, lifetime of opportunity, and we work on all of that to arrive at that sublime moment, free and clear of all that, then we can pretty much guarantee that we are using this life correctly to transfer our consciousness to our next life and be of better or greater service in, the, in our next life than we are on this one. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. It's a, a great way of looking at it, actually. Is this because it's not a play thing, is it? No. Okay, so you, you, you talk about a prayer. Um, what is this prayer uh, as a means of accessing for, uh, you, you know, sort of really anybody, as I understand it, anybody can use this prayer. So you've just got to have the will and the intention to do so. Um, can you tell us something about this prayer, um, where it came from and why sure. it's special? Yeah, sure. Uh, th this prayer came from the, the Mayan tradition. Mm -hmm. It was given to us uh, by uh, the Mayan priests and priestesses. Yeah. And there was a man in the 1950s, 60s, his name was Johnny Korshenska, uh, a Spanish nobleman from Czechoslovakian descent that received this prayer in Mexico. Mm -hmm. He was a chosen one, as there are many chosen individuals to receive the download of certain very important and specific information. So mm -hmm. he received this prayer, and then the original prayer was uh, uh, given in Mayan. So that prayer has, was then translated from Mayan to Spanish to English, and now to many other different languages. Uh, in my case, that is the prayer that I use, and I have had the prayer translated into um, five or six different languages. Mm -hmm. and, and each language, of course, is different. Yes. And what I look for in, is, is the, in, the, in the integrity of the vibrational frequency of the prayer in a different language. Yeah. When we repeat this prayer with a specific formula, we repeat the, th the prayer three times, and we are in the space of our heart, mm. then the prayer creates an internal vibration that brings our frequency to a higher degree. That is, and then we are able to identify the frequency or the energy of Akasha. So yeah. right now, every one of us is vibrating at a certain frequency. So mm -hmm. every one of us is slightly different. So let's say that you are here and Akasha is here. So mm -hmm. we are then bypassing this energy. We cannot connect. Yeah. And we say this prayer in the right mental, emotional space. If we are here, if the, if the Akasha is here and we are here, we're able to come up to the level of the prayer. So when we connect with that, it's like plugging in a lamp and the light comes on. Yeah. And then from that space, we can enter the Akashic fields and navigate and explore. Yeah. 
Yes. Now, the main thing is anyone can buy the book. <clears throat> yeah. And it's, it's where it's written in there, yes, you know. Yes. And uh, uh, to me, in, when someone reads the book, when someone comes to my live classes, it's really the same thing. There is one important ingredient, which is to be in the space of the heart. And the biggest mm. obstacle that anyone is going to encounter is lack of trust, mm. doubt. And mm. how many people doubt themselves in their life? You know, yes. how yes. many of us have been programmed from childhood, maybe your father walked around when you were doing your homework and you were not very good at arithmetic and you're adding two plus two plus two and you're writing seven and your father hits you in the back of the head and says, what's the matter with you? Are you stupid? Well, yes. that's a very strong imprint yeah. that we carry from the time of our childhood to the present. And that imprint is one that may keep us from fully plugging in or entering mm -hmm. into the Akashic Records until we explore that belief. So there are two ingredients mm. that our lives be what, what it is today. One is our belief systems, and mm -hmm. two is the condition of our mind. Yeah. Those two make, it, make the totality of, of our reality. Yeah. Mm. If we can, in a sincere, honest way, explore our belief systems, and if you create a belief system that you are stupid because your father told you that when you were seven, eight years old, mm. well, then we have to replace that belief system for another yeah. one. Mm. Maybe you were an amazing artist and your father did not see that because he was a numbers man. Yeah. So mm. he layer upon you a belief that did not, that doesn't belong to you. Yeah, yeah. So mm. We explore the, our belief systems we can change our reality. And the moment we change our beliefs and our reality, our life changes completely. Yeah. Now, it's not the easiest of, uh, it's one of those things that's so simple and yet so difficult in, in many ways. Well, that's another belief. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah and that's another belief that it is difficult. And I correct hundreds of people a year. Mm -hmm. If you believe that it's difficult, then it is. But okay. the moment you investigate where this where the, where this difficult comes from yeah and you arrive at the root of it is difficult and you change that from yeah. it is difficult to a simple and i can do it with joy yeah <laughs> wonderful yeah well, the changes so someone you know sort of looking in who's sort of thinking to themselves oh i'd love to be able to do that but you know i don't think i can they need to believe they need to look at that, I don't think I can, and change, Absolutely. well, why shouldn't I, and wouldn't it be fun? Where did it come from? Yeah. What, so what was, what, where and what was the birthplace, the same mm. moment in this life or our previous life that that belief surfaced? Yeah. Who was there and what was the, the cause, what was the emotional imprint created that makes you believe that you can't? A yeah. lot of people say it's impossible. Mm. <laughs> it's impossible. Well, you kind of program yourself with that, don't you? What I say is change, change. It's impossible to I am possible. Brilliant. Yeah. Mm. And then it's, it's all about the way we think. Yeah. You know? And I, cor I, con I correct my friends all the time. You know, sometimes they think that I'm a little bit of a pain in the butt. <laughs> because I'm always not. No. Correct the way you think, correct the way that yeah. you talk, because this is just a program that keeps on yeah. running inside of us. And that is what the Akashic Records can help us look yeah. and, and then get to a point of, of making the changes so we can live an extraordinary life. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, you've got to believe you can. Yes. And, and uh, then using your prayer and, and you give other instructions in the book as well about sort of centering and coming into your heart and things like this. Um, and as soon as you're in that space, the records are open to you. Now, there's obviously not just your records there. There's every other souls and animals as well as I understand it, record there, every conscious being. Um, what are the protocols? 
because if I go, you know, get in a whoopee, you know, that man I fancy, let me go and find out all about him. I mean, that to me strikes me as being very wrong. The, the, the book, for example, it's all about the initiation class, which is the level one. Yeah. The way that I teach the Akashic Records, I teach four levels. Mm -hmm. so go deeper, deeper, deeper. Yeah. So the level one class is all about you. Mm -hmm. Is you learn to access your own Akashic Records. You learn about patterns of interference. What is this? Where is this coming from? What is yeah. it? This is this mm -hmm. internal or external? We learn all of that so we can become the inner explorer or the yeah. inner archaeologist. Yeah. And we go within ourselves to explore. Yeah. In the level two class, which is the practitioner class, then you learn another prayer, mm -hmm. which is not in the book. Yeah. And that prayer gives you access to the Akashic records of other people. So then you can become a consultant. But yeah. at the same time, that same prayer can be used to access the Akashic records of animals and animals that are more domesticated. If you see a, an eagle flying in the sky, you cannot just go, oh, blah, 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 and access the Akashic records of that, of that, of that eagle. It has to be yeah. something that is more present. Yeah. But the beauty of the second level or this prayer is that gives you also access to the Akashic records of, of animals, buildings, sacred sites, nature, in other words, the Akashic field opens completely because everything is alive. Yeah. So yeah. animals are alive. Nature is alive. If you ever want to communicate with undines and fiery salamanders, with sylphs, you know, with the beings of nature, they mm -hmm. are there creating nature for us every single day. But yeah. we don't acknowledge or we don't connect. We don't call them. So with this, with the Akashic records, we can call them out to come out and play. And yeah. we can learn so much. We can reconnect in a very deep and intimate way like our ancestors used to do with nature yeah. and the Akashic records. Yeah. And also, I would like just to briefly say that, yeah. for example, sacred sites, yeah. most <laughs> sacred sites around the world are dead today. They have become theme parks for tourists. Yes. Mm. You, you know, you can go to Machu Picchu, I go almost every year. You can go to sacred sites in Mexico and Egypt, all over the world. I've been to most all of them. And those sites are dead. They're just for tourism. They yeah. don't use those sites for ritual and ceremony anymore. Mm. However, the Akashic imprint left behind by the, by the builders, by the architects, the slaves, the cooks, everyone is still in the stones. Right. And with this prayer, we can bring out of the temple or the sacred site the information that is stored in there for our benefit and our use. Yeah. So many times the question is, what was your contribution to this site? You know, if yeah. you're attracted to the pyramids in, in Egypt and you go there and you just have this tremendous deja vu type thing. Well, what was your, your contribution? Were you a slave, a, an architect, a priest, a priestess? Well, you know, and the Akashic Records, by bringing this information out of these sacred sites, can be incre incredibly useful for us. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I would assume, correct me if I'm wrong here, that, that if you can connect with I mean, more often than not, we talk about traumas, going to find out about the traumas and put right, you know, the, the problems and the karma and things like that. But there are also immense gifts that, that we built up in other lives. That's, yeah, I call it merit. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so we can access that and, 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 and maybe plug back into uh, knowledge and understanding and, and gifts that, that we developed in previous lives. 100%. That's yeah. why I mentioned the word inner archaeologist a few minutes ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we truly embark in a sincere, de devout exploration of ourselves with a spiritual tool, in this case, we're talking about the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. So by taking that tool, we start digging like an archaeologist. Yeah. Looking for whatever is inside of this yeah. mountain. Yeah. And as we did, we're going to find the skeletons. 
<laughs> and many people get discouraged when they find one or two skeletons because they go, oh my God, I did so wrong so bad in the past. Yeah. Mm. But when we bring the skeletons to the light, they simply dissolve, Yeah, mm. turn into dust. And as we continue digging, we also gonna find the jewels, the gems that we left there. And those are the treasures that we bring back and we place in our altar to mm -hmm. remind us of the merit and the accomplishment that we have had in previous lives. Remember what, that, what I said a little while ago, that this is the sum total of all of our lifetimes. Yeah. So if you, the, the listeners, are fortunate enough to be sitting in front of a computer, if you have heating, you know, heating your house, if you have running, running water, if you walk half a block to get food to put in your table, you are, if you have a job and some money in your pocket, a little bit or a lot, if you are not suffering at the level of suffering of so many other people around the world, you know, deep, deep, deep suffering, then you have done something right yeah. in previous lives for you to be able to exactly where you are today. Yeah. Stop complaining <laughs> and do the work that is required for you to be the most magnificent person, the most magnificent human being, the potential is within every one of us. Every one of us comes with the same built-in equipment. Mm. We just have to learn how to use it. And then once we do, then start impacting the life of others around us because we are the ones that we have been waiting for. We yeah. are the teachers, we're the prophets, we're the mystics, we're the saints, we're the scientists, we are everything. Yeah. And we're here to make a difference in the world, to, be, to bring priests, to bring the essence of love, to learn and reawaken the language of the heart and then share that with others so we can make this world a better place. And I know, and I am committed 150% to see the world change in nine lifetimes. It is impossible and unrealistic for me to, to think that the, the world will change completely in the way I see it in my mind in my lifetime. It's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. But I can plant the seeds in the consciousness of hundreds or thousands of people as you can and you are doing with your show so the awakening process can truly begin and together we can make a significant difference in this beautiful planet of choice that we have. Yes, that's wonderful. It is, really is wonderful because one of the questions I was going to ask you is, is what is going on with the world? Because it seems like, you know, it, it's spiraling down into chaos. But actually, actually when you, you look, there are so many amazing things happening and we just never hear about them. And there are so many amazing people doing incredible work that that reality of chaos and destruction is totally offset by, by what is also there if you choose to look for it. And uh, yes, where's it going? <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 I am fortunate uh, that with my teachings, I am able to travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. And even if it was not with my teachings, I am I'm, I'm a lover of, of, of travel and I travel to, all over to look at and record with photography in indigenous cultures. Yeah. And I see how the reptilian brain is still very much a part of many people, many cultures around the world. So it's mm -hmm. a slow and gradual evolution of the, of the rep reptilian brain to the enlightened brain. We yeah. are moving from a carbon-based human being to a crystalline human being that is capable of resonating at higher frequencies. Mm. However, we see it in, in governments around the world. We see it with the government of the United States and who is running the country and how there is no true kindness and compassion. So yes. we need to bring that essence to the world. So we are pulling a rubber band from both ends. Yeah. And sooner or later, that rubber band is going to have to snap. Yeah. You know? And those of us that are working as diligently as we can to bring consciousness and light to the planet, 
little by little are going to overtake the darkness that is in this planet. But we yeah. have to come together. We cannot be complacent. We cannot be um, plugged into spiritual consumerism, which is the same as regular consumerism and materialism. You know, yeah. we really have to wake up and to say, enough. Yeah. Enough is enough. You know, yeah. and it's not just about me and my comfort, but it's about everyone and what I can contribute. What can I do to make this place a better place? Are you a taker, a user, or you are you're simply an admirer of what is there? And instead of taking, you live behind something, even if it's just your essence or a prayer. Mm. To make this place or that place that you're visiting or going that you're observing in a better shape that you found it. Yeah. Yeah. Your passion is inspiring. It really is. <laughs> Um, yes, I mean, it's, I, I do um, have people say to me, you know, this is such hard work and uh, it's just me and I'm tired and, um, you know, what difference am I going to make? But the reality is every single one of us has a part to play. Absolutely. And to me, I don't say this is hard work because then I will become hard. Yes. <laughs> Self-talk. For yeah. me, this is joyous work. Mm. So it's not hard for me. And this, this is what we came here to do. I, I do it with joy. Yeah. Because my body, I travel 11 months a year sometimes, mm. you know, 10, 11 months a year. So does my physical body and my mental body get tired? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But it's not hard mm. because I do it with a lot of joy. People yeah. tell me, oh my God, you travel so much and you teach so much and whatever. You must be so so tired and i said no i'm on vacation all the time <laughs> you know yeah, you look at it yeah mm -hmm. just have the opportunity in the next uh, two or three days i have two classes with 60 and 70 people attending to learn about the akashic workers here in france my god that gives me so much joy yeah you know, to be able to be in a humble way in front of these people to transfer you know yeah the essence of the, the, of the totality of this teaching so they can go deep within themselves and truly get to that point of knowing that if the wings of a butterfly makes it a significant difference in the weather in the Amazons, that we also can make a difference in this world. Yeah. And also, we'd like to say for those individuals that think that don't make a big difference in the world, mm. have you ever walked a mile or a kilometer with a very small stone in your shoe? <laughs> wonderful yes ouch mm. absolutely a little tiny tiny, tiny. Stone makes yeah. a significant difference in your whole body yeah so we as little as we may be mm -hmm. when we acknowledge that we are within ourselves the essence of the divine yeah and we plug into that essence that the divine mind has conceived us in a perfect way. We are the ones that have reconceived our way, ourselves, in a different way. So we plug ourselves into the mind of the divine and we see ourselves as the divine mind has conceived us to be. Mm -hmm. Then we are divine ourselves. Yes. And as divine human beings, collectively, we can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Beautifully, beautifully put. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about family and family dynamics because you, you said at the beginning that uh, we obviously can connect into our own field, but also the field of our family. Now, is that something that people can do uh, with this first level? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That is by far one of the most important fields of inner work that anyone can do. Mm -hmm. you know, I have had an 86 year old man in my arms dying. I have assisted numerous people to, to, to make that transition. Mm -hmm. And in a conversation with this man, I said, is there anything that you need to forgive about your mother, your father, and this man with four or five minutes of life? Mm -hmm. said, oh, don't talk to me about my mother. You know, I will never be able to forgive this woman. Yeah. Okay, so here is a man, 86 years old, that is going to die mm. with this strong pattern of lack of forgiveness. Mm. 
And that strong pattern of lack of forgiveness with his mother is going to bind that individual to the process of continuing the karma in a future life. Yeah. So the Akashic Records gives us the ability to observe the dynamics in our family, the relationships that we have had with our blood family, with all relationships, but the most important ones, the blood family, and explore what is there. What are the agreements? What are the contracts that you have created in the past at a karmic level? You know, uh, I, I was born and raised in an extremely well-to-do family in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And when I was 17 years old, I told my mother, I am divorcing you. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, and I said, you know, I don't want your money. I don't want anything. I just I'm going to leave. And uh, anyway, she died 30 years later. And she said to me, if you leave now, when I was 17, uh, I will not leave you any inheritance. And she kept her promise. Yeah. So, you know, uh, so she died of uh, cancer of the liver and the pancreas, which is all about anger. Bitter, yeah. So it, so it was the most beautiful lesson for me because an ordinary man, woman, would go into, here is hundreds of thousands of dollars and property and or millions, whatever, that I did not receive. And after the hurricane, when I could have used some of that money I'm living in my car, you, yeah. know? <laughs> you know, so people can go to anger and regret and all of these. Mm -hmm. And for me, with the Akashic Kirkus, as I investigated the family dynamics and the karmic relationship with my mother, gave me the ability to understand that at inner levels, at a soul level, we created an agreement. Mm -hmm. And in that agreement, they, and that agreement was for her to sacrifice one lifetime for me to give me the lessons that I needed to receive in this life for me to get to a point of saying, thank you so much mm. for everything that you have given me, including these painful lessons because of my merit and my level of spirituality, I am capable of forgiving you mm -hmm. and allowing your soul to be free from the karmic dynamics that have bound us in the past. So mm. you can truly be free. Yeah. So the level one of the Akashic Records gives us the ability to explore this karmic family dynamics and any agreements that we might have made. And it gets to a point in which we want to ask, Akasha, is my genealogy or my ancestry serving me? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. If the answer is yes, great. Use the Akashic Records to enhance and to make that even more beautiful. Mm. But if the answer is no, then take the time, have the courage to investigate that. When mm. we start exploring family karma mm -hmm. with the Akashic Records, it's not easy work. Mm. It took me about four and a half years of sincere and devotional practice to overcome all of the obstacles that I encountered, the guilt and the 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 forgiveness and all these issues to overcome all that, to be able to get to the point of completely and totally disconnecting from my entire lineage. Besides that, I know that this is my ninth lifetime within this karmic family. Right. And at the end mm. of a ninth lifetime, mm. karmic pool breaks open and that gives opportunity for the genes to escape and move to another karmic pool to have greater spiritual evolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why this lifetime is so important. Now, we have to get to a point of recognizing where we are in, our, in this karmic family evolution. Are yeah. you in the first lifetime, second life, third, or in my case, ninth lifetime? That's why for me, it was so easy at a very early age seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old to see mm. that I did not fit yeah. into the family. So the question was, if I don't fit and I don't belong here, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> so obviously I belong here, even though I feel that I don't. Yeah. So what do I have to do to resolve this inner issue 
Yeah. Of belonging. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's potent work, but it's the work that will, it will liberate your soul. Yes. If you want, if you're looking for that, that liberation, you know, that just yeah. gives you the ability to be a little bit more free. Yes. One thing I said to myself many, many years ago, um, when I was wrestling with family and other issues in the age, it was whatever it takes, I want to sort it out this lifetime because I do no, not want to come back and eat this dish cold again. Absolutely. What happens, uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't put on your big girl panties and get on with it, it'll come back and back Absolutely. until you do. Anything, any karma, any karma from mm. the smallest to, to the biggest, if you don't resolve that karma, if you don't bring uh, inner peace to that relationship with yourself or with another, that will become, a, a, that, that is, not becomes, mm. it is a condition, is a part of the condition of your mind. Yes. And a condition of your mind is part of your consciousness. Mm. That consciousness is what gets transferred from one life to the other. So yeah. you're either going to come with a full book of, of, of unresolved karmic issues that you have to deal with and work with in your next life, mm -hmm. or you're going to come with a clear slate. So I know that in my next lifetime, I am going to be born in a conscious family. Yeah. Mm. This lifetime, I didn't. So it was only through the good merit, the good karma that came with me from previous lives, mm. I was able to recognize, separate, and from early childhood, create the conditions in my life that gave me, that opened my eyes to true spirituality, to mm. shamanism, etc. Yeah. Mm. Because otherwise, I would be right now sitting behind a desk, you know, being a banker or or a dentist like my mother was, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hardest thing that I ever wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, a, a wonderful thing that you say in the book. You talk about forgiveness, which, um, I mean, is, is huge and very fundamental to being able to, to, to resolve a lot of this. But you talk about how if you look at the lessons that maybe your family or whatever it is, um, what it's given to you with gratitude and with love that actually is nothing to forgive. And I just, uh, that really, really struck me. I loved it. Yeah. That's yeah. a powerful part. And in, in my level one classes uh, or retreats, uh, I do emphasize and talk about forgiveness for quite a while. Yeah. I always ask at some point at the beginning of the class, before I talk about forgiveness, uh, I ask the question, how many of you are dealing with patterns of forgiveness? That mm -hmm. you have to forgive yourself or somebody else. And nearly 100% of the people raise their hand. Yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. uh, I had a, about 20 years ago, a very powerful, powerful experience when I was looking at forgiveness and through the Akashic Records and another technique that I was using at the same time, because we can uh, mix techniques. The Akashic Records are the platform that gives, that enhances everything. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Using this other technique, I was brought to a point of, uh, it's a long, it's long to, to explain, but to, to a point in which I was able to realize that that everything that has ever happened to me in relationship with another person has been for my soul's growth. Mm. As painful as it might have been. And the masters asked me the question, write a list of what you think that you have to forgive. Mm. Said, okay. And I was dealing with my mother. So I was writing <laughs> all kinds of things. And the first thing that I wrote that I wanted to forgive is I, I don't ever want it to be anything like you. Yeah. You know? For example. Mm. So I wrote this long list. And when I finished that list, and, and I was asked to look, look at it and connect energetically to each of the items that I wrote. Then the next question was, how do you feel about yourself when you learn something that makes you be a better man? Mm. And for me, the answer immediately was grateful. I feel gratitude. Yeah. If anything at all that I'm doing in life, and I ask my friends, please, if I do something wrong, show it to me. 
Yeah. Because I will learn from that. So mm -hmm. by learning that, I was able to, to, to go into the space of, of, of what I consider to be complete and total grace. Mm. You know, it's an experience feeling that I cannot explain. I have had hundreds of mystical experiences, either through deep merit meditation or with the use of sacred plants, you know, in mm. shamanism, etc. Yeah. It's just unbelievably beautiful. But nothing like this, the sweetness of, of the grace of forgiveness. Mm. And when this experience came to an end, the master said to me, what do you have to forgive if you can be in the space of gratitude? Mm. And then they said to me, what is the closest energy to gratitude? And for me, immediately was love. So yeah. they say, what do you have to forgive if you are in the space of gratitude and love? Yeah. And when that, when that happened, it's as is this facade of what I thought I had to forgive disappeared like the smoke of incense, leaving behind the sweet fragrance of the experience itself. Oh, that is beautiful. It's, yeah, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. However, <laughs> however, in, in my book, I share a forgiveness prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I was going to take, in fact, that forgiveness prayer out of the manual that I use for my classes and the book. Mm -hmm. And the masters of Akasha said to me, no, leave it there, because not everyone is at the level of your own process in your spiritual evolution. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people need to use that prayer, the forgiveness prayer, in a daily way, in a, in a, in a process of 33 consecutive days to build a momentum that is going to get them to the point of being able to get to the point of forgiveness. Mm. So yeah. some of us, it's like a muscle, untoned muscle that we've got to exercise. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Um, before we finish, can, uh, can I just ask you to, to um, share with everyone listening how, how they can connect with you and, and, and the kind of work you do? And uh, yes, if they want to join sure. which <laughs> yes and, and i would like to also ask are you coming to the uk at some point <laughs> well i have a wonderful friend in, in in the uk that i have released as a level one and level two teacher mm. you know so you can connect with him you know if your listeners wanted to connect with me directly uh i do uh two i need two retreats in in, in a year that are my retreats and not promoted by or by some of my uh, mm. sponsors. Yeah. And the next one is going to be in Bali, Indonesia in September. All the information is on my website, journeytotheheart.com. So anyone can go there to journeytotheheart.com and find the information. I have a link of free stuff so people can download meditations, music, things like that. And all the information is there. Um, I teach in France twice a year, but my classes are full. Right now, there's a waiting list, even with a class of, of 70. Uh, I'm very grateful wow. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that would be probably the best way, you know, uh, go to the, to the website and look at the program that is there. My email, email address is there. Someone wants to email me directly. Yeah. And uh, to me, if someone wants to explore the Akashic Records, mm -hmm. The best way to me is during a retreat. Yeah. Because during a retreat, it's a two-week two retreat from September 15th to the 30th, okay? And in those two weeks, we are in a container. We are together 24 hours a day, you know? You're not going home at the end of the day when you have to talk with your husband or your friend or your father or your mother about it, and that dilutes the energy. But when we can be in a container... 24 hours a day doing meditations, doing practices, doing exercises, where we, where we explore level one, level two, level three, and start going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, then the magic happens. It's like at the, at the end of a retreat like that is when you experience this, this immense freedom yeah. that, that people can arrive at that on individual classes, but is. But to me, this is the best way during our retreat. Yeah. 
yeah wonderful and it's in the beautiful island of bali as well so that's yeah. to be a bonus. so if someone wants to come to bali this will be the last year that i do it in bali because i've been doing it for uh, 12 or 13 years in bali and i'm tired of bali <laughs> you know? uh, so, so next year the the retreat i will have a retreat in april of next year 2020 in guatemala which mm -hmm. is a magical land is where we the land that gave us the prayer that we yeah. use mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the September retreat will be in India. So either Bali this year or Guatemala or India next year. They all sound wonderful. <laughs> Anesta, thank you so much. Um, it's been inspirational. It really has. Your passion and the clarity with which you speak about these things is, is wonderful. Um, I can't thank you enough for giving us your time. No, oh, I thank you, Sierra, so much for giving me the opportunity to to be with you and to be a part of your series and to be able to talk a little bit about the Akashic Workers uh, with your listeners. And I hope that at least one seed of the awakening potential through the Akashic Workers has been planted in this electronic field of <laughs> that can help someone. Help Absolutely. Us. Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you. thank you everyone who's listening. Um, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another speaker. Thank you. Goodbye.